Hi, this is David Farrell with another electronic music video for you. In today's video, we're going to be talking about additive synthesis using Ableton Live's operator instrument. Operator is one of my favorite instruments in Ableton. Additive synthesis is a core technique for developing sounds electronically. And so we'll go over some of the basics of what that means and how you can use Operator to create some cool sounds using additive synthesis. Even if you're not using Ableton, the ideas behind additive synthesis transfer across a variety of platforms and uh, hardwares. So you still should be able to get something meaningful out of this video. Hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. I love to start any conversation by getting our definitions in order, and so what do we mean when we say additive synthesis? This is actually a relatively specific term, but it's pretty straightforward, and so we'll go over it quickly. Additive synthesis is a way to generate sounds that starts simple. That's my first point here. We start with very simple sounds, and we add them up together to create a more complex sound. So you take a bunch of building blocks, put them together to create something more complex. What are those simple sounds? In additive synthesis, they are most frequently sine waves. When we think of a sine wave, of course, we're thinking about a pure tone. That is to say, a frequency that does not have any overtones or any higher frequencies in its spectrum. We use these sine waves so that we have a really clean control over what frequency components end in our final sound. If we use more complex waveforms, we end up getting a lot of overtones. Maybe we get frequencies we don't want. And so frequently when we do additive synthesis, we just use sine waves. My final note is to say that even though it might sound really basic, you stack a bunch of sine waves together to make a sound, um, additive synthesis actually has a huge range of potential outcomes. You can create so many sounds. Uh, mathematically, we can reduce any complex sound to a some number of sine waves added together. And so anything you hear, anything you can imagine, could be created by uh, combining enough additive synthesis techniques, adding enough sine waves. So that's what we mean when we talk about additive synthesis. Let's jump into Ableton and take a look at how we can put this into action using Operator. Okay, I have switched to live. I've dragged an Operator instrument into one of my MIDI tracks. We can see all the different settings that are going on inside of Operator down at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to walk you through the ones that we need to get things ready for additive synthesis. The first thing that we need to do to use Operator for additive synthesis is change the algorithm inside of Operator. What does that mean? The algorithm means the way that the different oscillators that are being synthesized inside of Operator are organized. And it's located over here in the bottom right hand corner of the instrument. You can see these colored squares. Each of those represents a different oscillator. If I click on those colored squares, I see a bunch of different arrangements that I can use to uh, sort of have these oscillators generate sound. And uh, all of these are interesting and all of these are useful for creating sounds, but there's only one formula that will give us sounds via additive synthesis. It's this final one where we have four oscillators right next to each other. This will allow us to hear the frequency generated by each oscillator and add them all together. Uh, all these other ones are different ways we can use FM synthesis, frequency modulation, which uh, about which more in a different video. So when you're using operator to generate sounds via additive synthesis, step one is always go right to the algorithm and select this last one. If you don't do it, you are not creating sounds using additive synthesis, you'll get something completely different. It's really easy to forget this step or ignore this step, so please do take care to remember it. Once we have our algorithm all set, we can start putting together the different frequencies that we'll use to create our sound. Operator models four different oscillators. They're all here on the left side of the instrument, A, B, C, and D. And I can turn them on and off by clicking these little, uh, these little colored boxes if I don't want to use all four of them, for instance. Each of these oscillators can be tuned to its own frequency and can have its own amplitude setting. And how you choose those frequencies and amplitudes will determine what type of sound you have. I'm going to start by drawing our attention to this uh, box in the middle, which is the fixed frequency mode box. These oscillators have two modes. The default mode is sort of a keyboard mode. Whatever information goes into your Ableton system, maybe from a MIDI keyboard or from a MIDI file, for instance, will determine the frequencies. And so if you press C on your MIDI keyboard, it'll play the frequency for C for you there. This coarse tuning knob 
will tell you what partial from the harmonic series of that fundamental will be played. And so at one, it will play the fundamental. At two, it'll play the next overtone above. It'll play the octave above. At three, it'll play the next overtone above that, the fifth above. At four, it'll play the next harmonic, again, two octaves above. And you'll just keep going up the harmonic series, and it can go quite high, as you see, so very, very many partials above. The fine tuning allows you to do some uh, adjustments, some microtonal adjustments outside of that. And so that's the default setting for operator. Fixed frequency mode is a little bit different. It lets you type in the exact number of the frequency that you want to hear, t t the measures it in hertz. And so this is a different way that you can choose the pitches that you'll be hearing an operator. <clears throat> I'm going to be working in fixed frequency mode today, and so I'm going to set all of my oscillators up to have some very simple uh, harmonic ratios, some simple whole number ratios. I'll type in 200 hertz, 400 hertz, 600 hertz, and 800 hertz. The multiplier here allows me to go higher. If I turn it up to 10 instead of 800, it'll give me 8,000. I don't really want that. And then we have amplitude over here, our levels. Notice that the default setting is for all these upper three oscillators to be turned to negative infinity where we hear nothing. I'm gonna turn them up so that we can hear them a little bit. I'll model a real world sound, which is to say I will have the overtones gradually get quieter and quieter. Here's a rough estimate of a sound, just a real quick one that I've made using operator in fixed frequency mode. We'll get back to the drawing board for just a moment here to talk about the next step in crafting our sound, which is the ADSR envelope of the sound. ADSR is an acronym that stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. ADSR describes the amplitude of a particular sound over time. Each of the different parts of it affects a different part of the sound over time. Attack tells us how long it takes from the beginning of the sound for the sound to reach its maximum amplitude. A short attack will be very loud very quickly. A long attack will take a little time for the sound to get up to its maximum amplitude. After that, the decay it describes how long it takes the sound to move from that maximum amplitude to its sustain amplitude, which is the amplitude that it'll maintain while you hold down a key on a synthesizer, for instance. Sometimes the decay is very short, sometimes it's very long, and that sustain amplitude could be very close to the attack amplitude, or it could be very different. The release tells us how long the sound will continue after we take our finger off the key on a synthesizer, after the sound is sort of done with its sustain portion. A short release means the sound will stop very quickly. A long release means the sound will fade over time. Different ADSR envelopes will create really different sounds, and so this is one way we can get more variety out of our sounds in additive synthesis. Now that we have a sense of what ADSR means, we can start implementing it into our sound. You can edit the ADSR envelope of your sound in this large central window and operator, and each oscillator has its own ADSR envelope. They do not have to all be the same. You can edit them independently. They all look the same right now because the default settings are the same, but we can mess around with that as we need. We can edit the ADSR envelope in two ways. The first is graphically by moving around these little checkboxes. This first one is the time it takes to attack and the maximum amplitude of that attack. And so I can make my attack very short, very long. We'll make it maybe like a little over a two second attack. This sets the level of the sustain and of the, the amount of time it takes to decay into that sustain. And finally, the last box is the release time. And I can just drag these graphically. And if you're paying attention, you'll see that the numbers here are changing as well. I can also type into here to give me the exact amount. You can see that my attack is at currently at 2.17 seconds. If I wanted to edit that, I can just type in the, the time in milliseconds to give me a more precise number. If I type in 2000, it'll correct it to two seconds, 2000 milliseconds. And I can do the same for my release. This gives me a more of a dynamic sense of amplitude over time. It'll give my sound a different characteristic. I can do this for all of my different oscillators. For the sake of time, I'm going to right click on an oscillator. I can also copy these. 
you can see copy envelope from oscillator A. If I type that, it'll take all the settings from the ADSR envelope of A and copying them into B and copy them into C and copy them into D. This will give me everybody to be in uh, the sort of same and the same area for their ADSR envelopes. If I want to from there, I can edit them more finely as I go forward. Let's take a listen now to this sound with some different ADSR data. You may have noticed that operator, of course, has four oscillators. You may be asking, well, what if I want to have a sound that has more than four frequencies at once? In order to do this, my recommendation would be to use Ableton's instrument rack instrument. It's not really an instrument, okay? It's just a thing that holds multiple instruments and plays them together. And so I dragged an instrument rack into one of my MIDI tracks and I was able to put two instances of operator inside of it. And they both have all their own settings. The first one is the one we just built with uh, 200, 400, 600, 800. And then the next one, I added some higher partials. 1200, 1400, 1800, and 2000. And I was able, of course, to customize the ADSRs on all of those, set the amplitudes for them as well. This allows me to hear eight frequencies at once to create a more complex sound, a sound with more frequency components. And I could add more operator tracks if I wanted to have more frequencies. We can hear what this sound sounds like, the sound that has uh, these eight different frequency elements. <laughs> is the end of today's video, The Fundamentals of Additive Synthesis and How to Put It Into Action Using Ableton Live's Operator Instrument. In this video, we talked about some definitions for what additive synthesis is and how we can use operator to set it up. First, by setting the algorithm so that our oscillators are working in the right way. Second, by tuning our oscillators and assigning them their own amplitudes. Third, by giving them ADSR envelopes so that our sound has interesting amplitude characteristics over time. And we also talked about the possibilities of using instrument rack to combine operator instruments so that we could have sounds with more frequency components. This is a rich vein to explore musically. Uh, the sound I made was a really basic simple sound, but depending on the frequency settings, the amplitude settings and the ADSR settings. Just by varying those, you can create sounds that have all different types of characteristics. Mellow sounds, aggressive sounds, sounds that flow in different ways through time, sounds that have really harsh profiles, sounds that have really interesting sort of changing profiles over time. It's a powerful tool, so please get out there, use Operator, make some cool sounds, and uh, put them out there, share them with the world. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, never hesitate to ask. Otherwise, have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye.